These exercises are going to be geared towards developing a strong posterior pelvic tilt. So in a handstand, you want to have that nice straight line. You want to have a strong core, be nice and stabilized. Or well, you're going to need a strong PPT. So if you stick your butt out like this, even like if you're on a plank, you know, like this, that's a posterior pelvic, I mean, that's an anterior pelvic tilt. You want to do the opposite, tuck your butt in. So from this position, from here, butt out, butt tucked in. Your glutes are squeezed tight and your abs are squeezed tight. So everything around here is nice and tight. You got a, a nice flat lower back, arched, flat. So in the handstand, so in a handstand, <laughs> go tucked right here. It's gonna be an anterior pelvic tilt. Not much control. I can hold it because, well, I've been training handstands for quite a while now, but it's a lot harder. It doesn't look clean. But if I to hold this right here like this, but if I hold that posterior pelvic tilt, I create a nice solid line and I have more control throughout my body. And of course, when you get more advanced in handstands, you can just play with it. You can be loose up here all you want. <laughs> but you want to develop a nice, strong foundation and you want to have a good posterior pelvic tilt, which equals a nice, strong core all around here. The next thing is stability in the shoulders and the handstand we want to be elevated. So we push our shoulders down, we're depressing them. Down, sad shoulders. We shrug them up, we're elevating them. So on a handstand, you want nice, strong, control, stabilized shoulders. This is your base right here. And you're gonna to wanna to be shrugged all the way out instead of resting on your shoulders. So. From here, just kind of relaxed, and not not too much going on here. And then boom, yeah, oh yeah. <sighs> Nothing can stop me now. Nothing can knock me down. <sighs> when I push out and lock like that, and I'm just engaging all of my muscles here then I'm just, I'm locked in there as opposed to just being relaxed. So these exercises that I'm gonna show you are gonna be focused on building control in our shoulders and building that nice strong posterior pelvic tilt. Let's go. When we're holding a handstand, it's easy to start thinking about your shoulders and your hands and what's going on up here and then you forget about your posterior pelvic tilt, about what's going on down here, or vice versa. I can be holding a handstand, and then I can be concentrated on my posterior pelvic tilt, and then I'll realize, oh, wait, I'm not shrugged out all the way. My shoulders aren't stabilized. So this exercise right here is gonna help us be mindful of holding a posterior pelvic tilt and keeping our shoulders shrugged out the entire time. At the same time, we're gonna be developing a strong core. We're going to be strengthening our hip flexors and our legs because of course we want that nice tight line. Our whole body is going to be tight. So our legs are going to be, need to be flexed and stiff and the hip flexors help us hold that posterior pelvic tilt and get that nice strong straight line. We're going to combine an overhead stretch. This right here. Not, not right here elevated with the reverse Nordic curl. And right there on that second one, I almost forgot to shrug out and that's exactly what I mean. So if any time you catch yourself not fully shrugged out right here and engaged, then well, do it. 
And then at the same time, if you're going back right here, you'll know if you break that posterior pelvic tilt. See right here? As soon as your back arches, mm. so you're going too far back. So, oh, see, shoulders, all times. Push and shrug, always activate. And you'll start feeling these from your quads down to your knees. This is going to help develop nice, strong knees too. So, you know, these exercises are good for everything. <laughs> but do it this way. This helps you be mindful of holding your shoulders elevated while holding that posterior pelvic tilt. See? Anytime we're in a horizontal exercise, so a plank, or you can do a push up, hold a posterior pelvic tilt. So you got your plank right here. If you want to be relaxed right here, that's an anterior pelvic tilt. I'm going to butt arched out. Tuck it in, squeeze nice and tight. Squeeze those glutes. Squeeze your abs, posterior pelvic tilt. It's gonna be in all of these exercises. But when you're in that horizontal position, our shoulders, they're gonna be protracted. So like this. You're gonna be pushing your shoulders away from the spine. Push your shoulder blades away from each other. Protracted, retracted, pinching them together. Retraction, Protraction. And when we're, when we're in this position, let's say we're in a plank position, we're not going to be shrugging our shoulders. We're not going to be like this. In fact, when we're in the plank position, we want to try to hold them down, depressed. Down and away. So, just like that. Don't shrug them. Hold them down and protract them. Whew. Now that we have the plank down, we got that PPT, our shoulders are pushed out and activated. Then we're gonna come and do our plank taps. Whew. Come onto this one arm. You're gonna stay pushed out and shrugged out the entire time. Don't relax. If you relax, whew. and then it's a fail. Plank. So check one, posterior pelvic tilt. Abs squeeze tight, butt cheeks squeeze tight. Number two, whoosh. shoulders protracted. Oh, engaged. And just holding that, holding that shoulder protraction, you're gonna start feeling the muscles all around here. Go to work. You're gonna start feeling them. They're gonna start getting sore. And then we're gonna do those Plank shoulder taps. So boom from here, feet together, harder. Feet apart, much easier. Nice and controlled. Push out, hang there for a second, boom. Support, push out. There it is. Uh, I'm feeling the burn. I'm feeling the burn around my abs. See, it's easy to just be here, like relaxed and be like, doom, 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 like you see people do, right? But once you engage your posterior pelvic tilt, the core down there, you tighten everything up. And then especially when you start holding your shoulder shrug down here, protracted, got them protracted, boom, 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 come here, play with it. If you want, do a little shrug. All the meanwhile, you're not breaking that posterior pelvic tilt. You're keeping that posterior pelvic tilt held and your abs are gonna start burning. And this is gonna just start building that strong core combined with shoulder stabilization and strength. And when we're holding our handstand against the wall with our chest to wall, 
like this, then you're able to hold that posterior pelvic tilt. So you walk up the wall. From here, I'm gonna point my toes on the wall. Now here's my, here's my posterior pelvic tilt. Relaxed, engaged. My shoulders are shrugged out all the way. See that? So, so this is a holding a posterior pelvic tilt on the wall. And when you're holding it there on the wall and your shoulders are engaged, you're going to be feeling it up here. Your core is engaged, your lower back's engaged, and your legs too. You're, you're pointing your toes and you're keeping your legs flexed nice and tight. And I was feeling my quads were starting to burn. Now you probably noticed when I'm in a handstand, a lot of the time I'm kind of relaxed on my stomach because I'm breathing. Plus I'm working out right now, I'm moving around a lot, so I'm breathing faster. That's the thing about a handstand is you don't really have to keep your core tight, your stomach anyways. I'm holding a posterior pelvic tilt, so my core is tight. Like you notice I have that straight line and my glutes are tight, but I'm still able to relax here and breathe. I think that's something that kind of just develops naturally over time with practice. But in the beginning, while you're holding that posterior pelvic tilt handstand against the wall, try to keep it tight. But when you need to breathe, just breathe. Hold that posterior pelvic tilt. Like don't break this and flex for most part in your abs. But remember to breathe. So I'm making it sound confusing. I know. Okay. So I'm engaged. Now I'm tight. Breathe. Anyways, just hold this position right here, just like this, shrugged out. And then when you get used to this, when you can hold this for about 15 to 30 seconds, open your legs in a straddle position, and then start leaning over, shoulder tap. Leaning over, shoulder tap. Or just come out like that. Shoulders pushed out. That's right, you guessed it. Now from here, you want to pivot forward and then back. Pivot back and forward. We can go side to side. We can even do circles. So I'm not trying to do a pike push up, we're just kind of pivoting. This is just another way to play and develop strength and control and awareness in your shoulders. Sometimes when you're in a handstand, you can start to lean this way and then straighten yourself back up. And it's playing like that in those positions that have allowed me to develop the strength and then the, just the understanding, the mental connection to be able to do it. So I can be right here. Be like, oh, straighten up. Or fall into the side, straighten up, straighten up. Oh, see that? So what happened there, sometimes if your back starts arching, arching, if you built enough strength, that posterior pelvic that posterior pelvic tilt strength, and you see what I did right there, I was able to pull it back and save myself just barely. And that was thanks to training for a strong core. And that's it, just a handful of exercises that you can do to supplement your handstand training. 
but the best thing that you can do to get a strong handstand is just to practice handstands relentlessly. Don't forget to practice the handstands. I recommend training the handstands first, like doing a light warm up, some push ups, maybe use the resistance band to stretch out. Do your handstand training first and then do these exercises. All right. Well, it's about time to start training myself. Keep lifting yourselves. Oh.